hi everyone in this video we are going to see the summary and analysis of the short story tatva written by gobinath mohanty gobinath mohanty was an indian odia writer his period was between 1914 and 1991 now let's see the biography of the writer gopinath mohanty is the most important indian novelist of the mid 20th century he was a prolific odia writer He was born on April 20th 1914 in Nagabali Kattag. He was the winner of the Nyanpith award in 1973 for his epic Matti Matala which was translated into English as the Fertile Soil and the first winner of the National Sahitya Academy award in 1955 for his novel Amrudara Sandana. From 1938 to 1969 he worked in the Odisha Administrative Service. Then he served as an UGC distinguished visiting professor in Utkal University in 1976. In 1981 the government of India conferred the Padma Bhushan on him in recognition of his distinguished contribution to literature. In 1986 he joined San Jose State University in the United States as an adjunct professor of social sciences. He died at San Jose, California on 20th August 1991 at the age of 77. Tatpa is an important short story written by Gobinath Mohanty. In this story, Mohanty portrays the lifestyle of Dongria Hones, the tribes of Niyangiri Hills in Koraput district. Mohanty highlights the mindset and lifestyle of the tribes of Niyangiri Hills in Koraput district. The story reflects Mohanty's great love for the tribals, his deep sensitivity to their struggle for existence, their pride and predicament, and the impact of new waves of political transformation sweeping through rural India, which eventually influenced the tribals immensely. The forested slope of Niyangiri Hills is the abode of Dongria Hones, a tribal group. They inhabited this place since eternity. Dongria Hones called themselves Jarnia which means those who live by the Jarna which means streams hundreds of perennial streams flow from Yangiri hills and there are hundreds of Dongria villages by the streams Dongrias are considered to be the protectors of these streams hills and jungles by the people of nearby plains apparently there is no trace of civilization here There was no dispensary, no post office, no shops, no police station, no well or tank and not even a tiled roof let alone a regular building. They are one of the scheduled tribes, a primitive tribal group. Their total population according to 2001 census is 7952. They are regarded as an endangered tribe. They are regarded as an endangered tribe with pristine and distinct language and culture. The Khons and the Doms are the main tribals who maintain their distinct culture amidst modernity. With Dongria Khons live another sect of tribal people called the Doms. They had come up from the valleys in the course of time to earn a living. Doms offer liquor and occasional cash to Khons in exchange of fruit trees like orange tree and jackfruit tree. Their main occupation is carrying goods to the market. Dongria sapis their ancestors and gods with liquor and buffalo meat they live on hill slopes with inadequate clothings so their bodies need the warmth of liquor in severe cold they have no other entertainment they have no interest in sending their children to school because they fear that if they are educated they won't grow crops They have liquor made of salapa trees sometimes and more often they buy mahula wine and spend almost all earnings on it there are endless festivities rituals and worships buffaloes are given as sacrifice to gods and then consumed in a community feast the unique naming ceremony of cones is rooted in their past traditions established under the mahabrus blessings A name is chosen while reciting a list of names by a priest and throwing rice grains one after another into a pot of water reciting mantras by kalisi a woman possessed the choice of words is finalized on the name of which the grain stands erect in the pot thus the name tatpa was picked up by the kalisi 
Now Tatpa is a man of 25 years old. He is a Dongria Khon. He lives in the Dongria Khon village on Niyangiri Hill. One summer day, seven people from outside came to see Dongria Khon villages on Niyangiri Hill for a serious purpose. They spent nearly a week in the hill. There was always the fear of tiger and so sometimes they talked to one another and often they walked in silence. In this picture we can see the seven people who came from outside they are discussing about the villages in Niyangiri hills and the tribal people living there Now let's see the details of the seven people they are Parshuram the development officer he is a thin tall and experienced man from Bhubaneswar the next one is professor Bharat an anthropologist he is 40 years old He is a small looking and well built man. The next one is Haripani, a local official. He is 30 years old. His body is like stubborn black granite. The next one is Madhusudan, the forest god. He is 58 years old. He is a dwarfish weak man but a good guide. The other three persons are Makara, Najuru and Ramaya. They are Chaprasis. who are like our office boys these seven people came there to analyze the condition of the tribal villages on niyangiri hill and to do lopsided development projects in the name of tribal development they shared their views and opinions with one another about the tribal villages and the tribal people there when they were discussing about the tribal people there madhusudan the forest god and interpreter said They that is the Dongria Khons won't have anything to do with injustice or falsehood they are totally committed to their duties but they won't change their habits they won't brush their teeth or perform ablution or go to school or give up drinking any advice in this regard would fall on deaf ears then Haripani the local officer said when forests open up civilization comes in those who come from outside to serve among them and you need plenty of them need housing drinking water and other facilities it needs 20 or 25 lakhs investment school dispensary piggery orchard some factories if fortunately some mineral deposits could be discovered then another rurkala could be started and it would take very little for these people to change The seven people had debated the issues of the cones openly. They expressed their views and opinions very strongly and frankly and then became silent on thinking the dangers on their way. It was night time. Suddenly they spotted a shadow in the dense forest. It was moving and then became steady. Parshuram flashed the torch. There they saw a person barebodied with a loin cloth and an axe on the shoulder. Parshuram asked who are you he replied i am tatpa he is a dongria hond about 25 years old he asked for a bd from them they gave it and he started smoking they started walking along with him at that late hour of night in that dense forest haripani asked him are there tigers in this forest tatpa said of course there tigers are it has eaten many and it lives near that waterfall Then Haripani asked but you are going alone at night are you not afraid Tatpa replied this forest is ours i am not afraid i climb the hill at night to guard my crop whenever there are other needs i walk into the forest and today such a great need Madhusudan asked what is it Tatpa laughed and said it is for a dangdi bent i am on the way to Benubali village Except Madhusudan nobody knew about Dangdi Bend so Madhusudan explained about the Dangdi Bend to others it is a custom of choosing life partners dangda refers to boy and dangdi refers to girl now tatpa was going to get a bride in the neighboring village dongrias follow a peculiar custom for selecting their life partners dangdas of one village going to neighboring village to dance with the dangdis of that village they were looked after well spent the night singing and dancing and returned in the morning
in the midst of songs and dances they choose their life partners and marriages were solemnized thereafter thatpa asked these seven people about their experience as dangda when they were young they said they have no custom like this thatpa asked only when two persons come to know each other through songs and dances laughter and play only then can they build a proper relationship otherwise how can they make it we are dongriya dongriya is the king of niyangiri then bharat asked is it true that the dangdi does not sit in your lap instead you sit in the dangdi's thatpa said yes the son sits in the lap of the mother but is not the dangdi a mother we are sons dangdi is the mother when a child we sit in our mother's lap when we grow up we sit in the lap of the dangdi who chooses us when i am old and drop dead i will sleep in the lap of another mother dardani basumadi she is the mother of all of us thus they started walking talking among themselves on their way that pass said these forest and hills are our home and you are our guest the wild animals are like our brothers now they were on the sakata river penumali village was 4 miles away from here that pa had to go there he showed the way to the seven people to reach the road in the left and he entered into the river to reach his destination in the right when thatpa was about to leave he came to parshuram and said give me 25 pies i will eat something if i can't take money from my parents for something to eat from whom shall i take it parshuram gave two 10 pies coins and bharat gave another one he thanked each one left with a rapid stride and vanished into the dark in no time his song was heard in the distance a little ahead something sparkled on the ground Bharat bent down to see there was one ten paise coin next to it was another they were fallen from Tatpa's hand the seven people thought that if he had no care for money why did he entreat us so much for it Madhusudan said this was his way of honoring you as his parents again he said he is almost like a child with so much intelligence money is like bubbles in his eyes now they looked back a little the niyangiri hill seemed to be asleep in the moonlight they reached the road they continued their discussion for the development of dongria horns with this the story comes to an end till now we have seen the summary of the short story thatpa now let's see the critical analysis of this story In this story Mohandi chronicles the endless plight of the tribals and their oppressed milieu he has deep faith in humanity and hence concentrates on the plight of the aboriginals and offers an extensive detail on their lifestyle and the consequent suffering that they endure through neglected living he has revealed the customs traditions and superstitions of the tribals of southern odisha He sincerely attempts to bring out their trials and tribulations to survive against the adverse situations sometimes against natural calamities and sometimes against man-made despondencies. The story explores the problem of land alienation and deprivation which has increased in magnitude and complexity with the migration of non-tribal farmers. the communication network and building of roads have facilitated the influx of non tribal invaders resulting in internal colonization the story holds mirror to lopsided development projects in the name of tribal development here mohandi has effectively thrown light on their social system of having a unique self sufficient lifestyle the tribal values are an outcome of their unique association with nature the aim of non tribal outsiders is not to change them for their good but their true aim has neo colonist or imperialist designs all efforts to ameliorate their condition and lifestyles spring from the greed and self interest of the outside world in the resources of the forest as a result of outside influence shows the inadequate and non judicial interference in the tribal belts it is a threat to the culture of the tribal people 
From this story, we come to know that they have an unflinching faith in the ancestral and natural spirits, but also believe in the eternity and the oneness of the soul. The story is a critique of civilizing mission of government and subverts the value of money, which is hallmark of the civilization. With the advent of modernization and numerous development interventions, the traditions, beliefs and social norms of the tribal society are changing drastically. Through this story, the author canvasses the living history of tribal community and the way of its disintegration in the civilizing mission of colonial modernity in Odisha. Till now, in this video, we have seen the summary and analysis of the short story Tatpa written by Gobinath Mohanty. Hope you would have understood it very clearly. Thank you for listening.